Today's midterm elections feature the most diverse group of candidates in U.S. history. A record number of women, people from different ethnic backgrounds, and LGBTQ candidates are running for all levels of government across the United States. Think about that for a second. Paula Reed is in Arizona, where two women hope to make history tonight. She joins us from Tempe, Arizona. Paula, good morning. Good morning, Gail. We are standing in front of a polling location where voters have been lining up since before 5 a.m. But really the only thing we know for certain about the Arizona elections today is that the state will get its first female senator. As Democrat Kirsten Sinema and Republican Martha McSally duke it out for this coveted seat. And it's not just here in Arizona. Across the country, there is a wave of diverse candidates on the ballot fighting to be a first. I don't want anyone to elect me because I'm a woman. But we need to elect because I'm better. Voters in Georgia could make history by electing Stacey Abrams as the nation's first to the black woman the, to be governor. I'm supporting people in a marginalized community. In Vermont, Christine Halquist could become the first elected transgender governor. Minnesota and Michigan may pave the way for the first Muslim women to Congress. With candidates Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. Together we can organize around the politics of hope. While these candidates are Democrats, Republicans may also break ground. In California, Republican voters could put the first Korean-American woman, Young Kim, in Congress. The number of female congressional candidates has increased by 44 percent since 2012, and women of color have increased by 75 percent. The face of government could also change in other ways. Roughly 1,800 current and former educators are vying for state seats, and an unprecedented 200 veterans are running for Congress. I've dedicated my life to serving the country I love. But within the diverse field, there is a common thread, women. The stakes are high. We can't afford to get it wrong. Unlike in the past, I'm running for Congress. I've had enough. I'm running for Congress. They're not trying to downplay their femininity. I put criminals in prison during the day and change diapers at night. They're also highlighting their unique strengths. I won't back down because progress is undefeated. We just need to fight for it. Are you ready? Many of those women are running for office for the very first time. And it was interesting to learn that nearly half of the 50 states have never sent a woman to the Senate, and there are five that had never even sent a representative who is a female to the House of Representatives. John. Paula, thank you.